In Tchaikovsky's day, any child would instantly know what a waltz is, how it is danced, and what it's supposed to sound like. Today, unfortunately, a lot of our students have never seen much less danced a waltz. So what is a waltz? It is a dance in three, where people dance in couples. On the first beat, both dancers dip, and then on the second and third beats, they swirl around. That swirling continues around the room. As a result, the waltz is the most romantic of the ballroom dances in the 19th century. Think about it, people are close together in each other's arms, and all of that constant swirling about makes you just dizzy enough to consider, you know, interesting thoughts. So, what makes the waltz tick? Well, in most composers, not just in Tchaikovsky, but in Chopin and Schubert and many composers who wrote waltzes, um, the waltz rhythm is in the left hand. Something like this. Basically, um pa pa, um pa pa. Right? The um pa pa rhythm, if you play it absolutely evenly, is actually not a waltz rhythm, but in fact is a landler, a precursor of the waltz. A waltz has an added ingredient, something magical in it. Remember I told you about the dip on the first beat? Well, the dip makes the first beat not only louder, but just a little teeny bit longer. And as a result, beats two and three are not just quiet, but a little squished together or faster. So instead of one, two, three, one, two, three, we get something like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now we're waltzing. So now let's discuss how to make that work physically. Remember, the whole point of the Russian school of piano playing is to find a motion or a way to use the hand to create the result that we want. In this case, a swirling feeling of the waltz. Well, the first beat, as I keep saying, needs to be quite a bit longer and heavier than the others. Therefore, the motion should have a little bit of a feeling of a down, or that dip that the dancers would do. And then the uh, chords themselves should be very quiet and therefore very close to the keys. And come flying off where the time is done so that the next measures Downbeat can take place. Down, up, up, down, up, up. And now our left hand is waltzing. So now let's talk about the right hand. Common mistake here is this. Did you hear what was wrong with what I did? I ignored the rests and made three separate fragments crushed together into one phrase without any breaths in it. Not at all what Tchaikovsky writes, correct? What he wants is this. Now did you notice that not only did I pick up at the end of um, each of the little slurs, but I also moved my arm through each of the three note fragments in the direction of the melody so that my right hand is also dancing. Let's look at it again. Honestly, I did not need to add any special dynamics or really anything else because the motion of my arm does the work. In the B section of the waltz, a new difficulty is presented in the left hand. So now the first beat, instead of coming up with the staccato, needs to hold through the entire measure like this. Did you notice how I did the dotted half notes as a legato? It's an option. You don't have to. You can try. Both ways. Did you also notice the 
elliptic fingering I use in one of the chords. I use my thumb to hit both the A flat and the B flat. We often do that with white keys, right? Why not try doing it also with the black? If your hand is big enough to reach, great. This is written for children, however, whose hands may not be of the appropriate size. I highly recommend practicing the left hand very much alone to make sure that the holes are actually happening. Because without them, the music loses a lot of its interesting character. Remember here in the right hand, the right hand is staccato, and so there will be a lot of silences if you don't play what Tchaikovsky says. Which is very different from. Beautiful. The middle section of the waltz is a favorite with many of my students because the left hand becomes easy. Right? But we have decisions to make. Do we actually want what I just did? It's kind of unattractive. Let's instead create a drone. Did you see? I kept my fingers very close to the keys and played from what is known as the double escapement point. You can play on the modern piano and not let the key all the way back up for it to be able to play again. You can basically play from the middle of the key. It's an amazing effect. I'm not pedaling. It just sounds like I am. How marvelous. Now, of course, if you're playing on an electric as opposed to acoustic piano, the effect isn't going to happen. So your job is to just keep your fingers as close to the keys as possible. This section in general, however, because it repeats so many times, can be boring. We don't like boring. So we need to design some kind of dynamics. So listen to my performance at the end of this segment and see if you agree with the musical decisions that I have made. But you can definitely make your own. You can take four measure motifs and create echo effects. You can do what I did, which is grow and then descend the dynamics. You can do the exact opposite. You can start loud, collapse the dynamics, and come back up again. Um, the sky is the limit. Only your imagination is the limit. I hope I've answered a lot of your questions. If you have more, please leave them in the comments. Happy practicing!